Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Alright, so we've got a pretty interesting pack with lots of options. Our rare is Tesa. Reasonable card, it's not uh, busted unless you can really build around it with plenty of uh, afterlife cards in the Orzov deck. But if you do, then it's pretty decent. 4 mana, 2 for of course, not too impressive. We've got the Sphinx of New Prav, excellent card for the Azorius deck. Of course, not very splashable. Most decks in this format are two color. You do have the Gates deck that dabbles into different colors. And uh, you can sometimes have like a three color control deck that's like Esper colored, for example. You do have more multicolor decks than in Guilds of Ravnica, that's for sure. Predominantly, it's still going to be two color decks within the different guilds. And then uh, Sunder Shaman, of course, great in the Gruul deck, similar to Sphinx of New Prav. And then a quick look at the commons. There's nothing that really jumps out. Get the point is okay removal. Azorius Knight Arbiter, a nice evasive threat for the Azorius deck. So those are probably the two best commons. But I think we've got our eye on the two uncommons and Taisa for the most part. Got basically three good cards for three different guilds. From what I recall from playing this set, I wasn't the biggest fan of Gruul, just because most of the commons outside of Savage Smash are not too exciting. Uh, whereas it was much easier to get good Orzov decks and Azorius decks. So just based on color preference, I would lean towards Sphinx or Taisa over Sunder Shaman. Even though Sunder Shaman might individually be stronger than some of the other ones, that's still a close decision. So between Sphinx of New Prav and Taisa, in an average Orzov deck without too much afterlife, Taisa is not going to be too exciting, and I would rather just take the Sphinx. If we can get enough afterlife synergies, then Taisa could of course be better. Gates Ablaze, I guess I should talk about as well. It is a strong card for the Gates deck, but the Gates deck is always a pretty big gamble because you're not guaranteed to get all the gate payoff cards and all the gates. Gates Ablaze potentially has the highest upside if we take it and uh, get a good gates deck, but um, you can never feel too safe first picking it, because for all you know, you're just not going to get all the good gate cards. Of course, this is a bot draft, so there's no humans drafting, so the bots might ignore some of the gates payoff cards more than humans would. I remember uh, Gate Colossus going pretty late, but uh, especially if you're drafting this in paper, I wouldn't recommend taking Gates Ablaze too highly unless you know the other people aren't drafting Gates. Alright, let's take Taisa. And second pick, one of my favorite commons in the set, Blade Juggler. Had we taken Sphinx, we would take Admonition. Had we taken Gates Ablaze, we would be a little bit sad, maybe still take Arrestor's Admonition. Could take the Azorius Guild Gate, but I don't really want a second pick in the Azorius Guild Gate necessarily if I'm in the Gates deck. It's usually kind of centered around the teamer colors. Not too much white, not too much black, unless you're splashing for the Archway Angel in white or some removal in black. So yeah, given that we first picked Dice, I think Blade Juggler is a clear pick. And this is Kind of what people sometimes complain about with Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Legions is that you're kind of drafting on rails in the sense that if you first pick a great card within one of the guild scholars, you're kind of forced to more or less stay within that lane and there's not a ton of wiggle room. So if now, for example, I'm just uh, probably going to take this Grotesque Demise and we seem to kind of commit to black. I'm not 100% committed to Orzov, like I just take the best black card here uh, over the messenger and there's still a chance if I get a great um, multicolor card like Carnival Carnage later that I can switch into Rakdos instead of Orzov, but uh, I think Demise is the pick here. Uh, other considerations, not really, like messenger's fine, but uh, Demise is excellent removal, can even exile afterlife creatures. There's a few expensive cards you can exile with this too, like uh, Mammoth Spider and the 2-5 uh, Unblockable in Azorius, so it does get a lot of relevant cards. And the exile part is definitely relevant since there is quite a bit of graveyard recursion with Dead Revels in this set. So let's take Demise. 
and kind of solidify some of our black uh, colors here. All right, fourth pick, best card in general. It's close, like there's a, a bunch of different reasonable cards. Messenger's fine. Flames of the Race Bore, if you have enough four powered stuff, can be quite good. Usually in Gruel. Dagger Caster can be okay. It's usually fine to main deck it. Um, it's even better as a sideboard card if you know your opponent has a bunch of one toughness cards. So it shines especially against the Orzhov deck with Afterlife, but uh, can still be fine elsewhere. Uh, there's no amazing black card here. Transport and Crocodile are not very high picks. So I think I'm leaning Messenger here. Great synergy with Taisa. There's no amazing Rakdos cards I'm passing up on. Like, again, Daggercaster would be fine in Rakdos can enable Spectacle. But uh, given that we already have a Taisa and the Messenger synergizes well with it and is a good individual card, I don't see a reason to abandon White's. All right, well, now we are seeing some more good red cards. Cure the Critics is excellent. But then again, there's also Oligarch, which is a pretty good two-drop for the deck, especially when we have Taisa to synergize with it. Uh, best card in the pack overall is between probably the Saratok and the Guildmage, with uh, Cure the Critics close behind, followed by probably Oligarch. So pretty strong pack here, fifth pick. So, I mean, we're getting pretty mixed signals, Oligarch being here makes us happy to be Orzhov, but it's also pretty late Skewer, Serotok and Guildmage, so maybe Gruul and Orzhov are both open. Uh, we don't see it on the blue cards, so yeah, I think I'm just gonna stick to the Orzhov plan here. Oligarch is a great 2-drop. Also very good at enabling Spectacle for a turn 3 Blade Juggler. And this pack is a bit weaker than our previous one, still a bunch of playable cards for us. Uh, the Grudian can be fine. We've got uh, Trumpeter if we wanted to go Rakdos, which I don't see reason to at the moment. Uh, don't really want to play this if you don't have the red mana to activate it. Uh, exposed to Daylight, main decking one is reasonable. There's a few powerful artifacts and enchantments. I think ill got an Inheritance, uh, Law Mage's Binding, even Gate Colossus you can destroy with it. So I don't mind Exposed in the main deck for Basso 1. Uh, Orator is also fine to drop if we just need more cheap stuff. So here it's between probably the Orator and the Grudian. Footlight Fiend also has a bit of synergy with Taisa. If it triggers twice, you can deal two damage. But for the most part, I see this as a Rakdos card still. I think I'm gonna take the two drop here just to make sure I keep the curve low as opposed to Grudian. But Grudian would also be reasonable. Uh, Knight of the Last Breath doesn't often make the main deck. Seven mana is pretty pricey. But we do have a Taisa deck, so all this afterlife generation is uh, quite a bit better than it would normally be. Uh, Scavenger can also be fine in Orzhov, since you often have a bunch of sacrifice fodder from uh, afterlife. Cards like Oligarch, you don't mind sacrificing in the late game. So Scavenger is pretty reasonable in Orzhov as well. Uh, not the biggest fan of Pegasus, but uh, can be quite good in the high alert Azorius decks. So in this deck, I don't mind taking knights, uh, just because we have that powerful synergy with Taisa. But I'm not guaranteed to play it. And I can probably get another scavenger later. Not too much here. Uh, still seeing some pretty good green cards here. Gruul Beastmaster, definitely powerful if you can combine it with pump spells. I can take a plaza in case I want to splash something. Uh, I could take a clear the mind if I somehow want to turn into like an Esper clear the mind control deck. But uh, we already have quite a few creatures, so I think I'm just going to speculate on the plaza. Don't think I'm going to miss out on a Thirsting Shade. We did wield the Panther, so... Alright, Dead Revels is excellent. It's a great way to buy back some creatures in the late game. And we are, for the most part, a creature deck. And I can speculate on this Carnival Carnage in case I end up splashing, or I can speculate on Expose in case we want to main deck one. Even on the Splash, this isn't an amazing card. Probably still take Expose in case I want to main deck one. Might play a Transport as just a big curve topper that also has good synergy with Taisa. All right, well, 13th big Guild Mage, that's uh, unusual. All right, we did get an Expose anyway, not gonna play two, so I'll just take the Uncommon for the Vaults. So we're pretty solidly in uh, Orzhov here. 
moving into the second pack where we open some reasonable cards now sadly crowd carnarium as powerful as it may be in constructed not exactly the type of card we want to cast in our afterlife deck since it exiles our creatures and we don't get the benefit of afterlife so i don't think i'll, I'll be taking that here but it uh, can be fine if you end up in a more controlling deck uh, so probably looking at another grotesque demise as another powerful removal spell and then we can hope to wield twilight panther and we might play that as well. I definitely like picking up a couple guild gates to just improve our mana base, especially if we get some of those like double white, double black cards. In this case, it would be the Bell Haunt. Otherwise, those cards are difficult to cast on curve if you just have like an 8 9 mana base. And we're not really giving up on much. Um, Angel is fine if you've got a bunch of gates. 6 mana, 3 for flying. If it doesn't gain a ton of life, is not an exciting card. Stalwart is pretty medium, but playable if you've got a low curve. Nothing else, really. Alright, a third Grotesque Demise. I mean, it does have a little bit of diminishing returns, but not that many that I wouldn't take a third copy. Uh, Senate Griffin would also be playable here. I think I would take both of those over the Watchdog still. But I'll take Demise over the Griffin. All right, there we go. Grasping Thrall. Excellent way to close out the game. The life gain and drain is very relevant and uh, a 3-3 flyer is great. And we can potentially get it back with Dead Revels to do it all over again. All right, now I can potentially pick up a Senate Griffin over Cry of the Carnarium. Knight of Sorrows is pretty marginal. Usually don't want it. Do of course have the Taisa to make it a little bit better, but even still, I think I'd rather have Griffin. Alright, close decision here between Oligarch and Spirit of the Spires. Looking at the curve, we don't have many two drops. I think I'm probably leaning towards the Oligarch, uh, but the Spirit of the Spires is definitely pretty decent, as we do have quite a few flyers. Of course, Afterlife makes flying spirits as well. But uh, looking at the curve, I think we just need an extra Oligarch more than we need another good 4-drop. And then now I might pick up a Noxious Grudian as a reasonable defensive creature on 3 over Officer Knight of Sorrows. And we already have some good curve toppers with a Transport and a Knight that we don't need Sphinx of the Guild Pact. Ooh, nice final payment, 8th pick. Great synergy in a deck that has a bunch of uh, expendable creatures we can sacrifice and a bit of life gain to offset the life loss potentially. And we did wield the Twilight Panther. Don't know if I'll play two, but can go wrong with another one. Just take an uncommon for the vault. I don't think we're ever playing the veteran. And I guess there's a small chance we end up picking up a few extra gates and the angel becomes fine. Alright. So, heading into the last pack, what do we need? I guess I'll take the knight just in case. Just kind of looking to solidify the early part of our curve. More afterlife creatures, of course, are welcome. Uh, especially ones with afterlife too. The ministrant at 3, for example, would be quite decent to go with our Taisa, an extra Messenger, an extra Grasping Thrall, another Blade Juggler would be nice too. And then um, second Guild Gate would also be a small improvement. And then uh, in terms of removal, we've got Final Payment, Triple Grotesque Demise. So we're doing okay, could maybe use one more. All right, last pack opened Awaken the Erstwhile, which is pretty much unplayable, sadly. Uh, Syndicate Guildmage is totally reasonable. Gives us a 2-mana two 2-2 two, two we can play early, and in the late game has some good utility. Inheritance is usually better suited for more aggressive decks. Our deck is kind of in the middle. Uh, it can definitely have aggressive draws with like early oligarchs into blade jugglers. But we're probably not going to maximize the, in the potential of Inheritance. 
because we seem to have kind of a slower deck with some of these expensive cards, good removal. So we're not gonna necessarily uh, take full advantage of the Inheritance. So I think in this deck I prefer Guild Mage over Inheritance, but there's definitely some decks where you would uh, prefer the Inheritance, and there's not much else. Like get the point, we could potentially splash, but I don't necessarily want to do that now when I don't have any good red mana fixing yet, other than the Plaza. That's the second Biomancer Familiar we're passing up on, sadly. Uh, summary Judgment is good removal. There's an Order of Locket, which I wouldn't mind. Consigned to the Pit if we want some more expensive removal. So there are some decent cards. Probably leaning Summary Judgment. It is good in combination with Flying Creatures, since you're often kind of in a racing situation where your Flyers are attacking and the opponent's hitting you back on the ground. And then Judgment can take out a pretty sizable ground creature from the opponent if it's tapped. And it's a bit cheaper than Consigned to the Pit. I would play Ors of Locket if I got one, might get one later, since we don't have a ton of stuff at 3 and the ramp into our more expensive cards would be useful. But uh, probably still taking the removal spell here. Perfect, Ministrant of Obligation. Although it's in the same pack as the Blade Juggler and Another Demise, sadly. So we have to decide. Probably still Ministrant. We don't need to rely on a 2-drop to enable it, unlike Blade Juggler. And Afterlife 2, of course, is great if we ever combine it with Taisa. But uh, yeah, Blade Juggler would also be excellent in our deck, since we do have quite a few cheap creatures to enable Spectacle. And nice, another great Afterlife card, Ors of Enforcer. Definitely taking it over the Oligarch here. So yeah, that's just going to be our pick. So we do have a pretty synergistic Afterlife deck here. Uh, this pick... Like, maybe we'll play the Vampire. It's not too exciting. But it does technically synergize with Taisa as well. And I could potentially use an extra 4-drop, so... I'll take it. Uh, not the biggest fan of the scope of Vampire, that being said. I could potentially use an extra 3-drop. And I probably don't want another Deadder's Transports and Carnival Carnage for just a carnival half is not too exciting. So I'll take Vampire. And yeah, perfect. Another Blade Juggler would also love another Dead Revels, but I think I'm leaning towards the Juggler here. Might play Consigned to the Pit, not gonna play Caracal or Sentinel's Mark. Don't think we're playing any of these. I guess I'll just take the Uncommon for the Vault then. Uh, probably never gonna play two Consigned to the Pit main. Probably not gonna play a Thirsting Shade. Just take the Shield, I guess. Another Uncommon for the Vault. Don't need a third Panther. Ooh, nice. That's a gift. And another Grudian, so... Definitely ended up with a decent deck. So cards on the cutting block here. Could see shaving the orator now that we picked up an extra oligarch. This is kind of our interaction in one pile. Don't know if we need to main deck the expose. The vampire is one of our weaker cards overall. Uh, Vampire is also one of the weaker cards. Knight of Sorrows. And then I think I like all the top ends. And then 17 lands seems uh, reasonable too. Don't think I need Archway Angel. Don't think I'm playing the Plaza. So I need to make 7 cuts, so how about I cut all of these. Then I need to make 3 more cuts. So I could see shaving a panther, I could see shaving orator, although with double blade juggler having enough two drops is important, but I guess a panther can also enable spectacle. Yeah, probably not gonna main deck the exposed to daylights, shave a panther, and then maybe cut orator anyway. And end up something like this. I could also see cutting the Knight of Last Breath, but we don't have like an incredibly powerful late game if you look at it. 
I don't have that many flying creatures like one messenger, a griffin, a grasping thrall, and then the tokens I get from afterlife. So I do need a way to potentially close out the game. The guild mage can help there. The flyers can help. And then knight is potentially another way to do it. So I don't mind it here since we don't have a ton of great uh, late game. Like I only have the one grasping thrall. And then I have two death touch creatures in Grudion and Panther to hold the grounds. Those are quite good against the Gruul deck. And then Triple Grotesque Demise, mostly to deal with opposing flying creatures. Consign and Final Payment for bigger stuff alongside Summary Judgment, so... A pretty well-balanced deck. I've got... Uh, six creatures to enable Spectacle on turn 3 for Blade Juggler, which is important. And then plenty of Afterlife to go with Taisa. So yeah, deck looks good. Mana base, probably an even split between black and white, if I had to guess. So yeah, even though we do have maybe slightly more black cards than white, I do need double white for griffins, I don't think I wanna go 9 swamps. So 8 and 8 seems appropriate. And we'll pick some nice uh, Ravnica-themed lands. Let's see here. We do have triple Grotesque Demise, so that's probably gonna be part of it, and triple Oligarch. <laughs> Bad breath. All right, got uh, double bad breath in hand. Yes, yeah, seems fine. Facing Simic. And they appear to maybe be sitting on some counter spells. We'll see. All right, nothing so far. They don't have double green, double blue. Ooh, but a guardian project. This card's very good. Now, let's see. How does this interact with the Grotesque Demise? Enters the battlefield. If it doesn't have the same name as another creature you control or a creature card in your graveyard, draw a card. So normally, what you can do against guardian project is in response to the trigger. Use a removal spell on the creature so the opponent doesn't get to draw a card. Now, Grotesque Demise exiles, so it doesn't counteract the Guardian Project, sadly. But if it does set destroy, then we could potentially use that trick to prevent the opponent uh, drawing a card. Charter Crab sadly dodges my Grotesque Demise. So yeah, we just need to curve out and hope uh, the Flyers can get there. Because we're not going to win the late game with Guardian Projects. So Charter Crab can become a 5-5. So we'd still trade for the transports. The timing on when you adapt Charter Crab is also important since depending on when you activate it you might be able to tap down a creature for longer. A bunch of cards my opponent could be splashing for here in red. Maybe some powerful uh, gold cards in Gruul. They're gonna tap down the transports, alright. And looks like they have a fight spell here for the throw, sadly. Alright, so we're down to our messenger. Guild Mage is decent. So hopefully we can convert these Grotesdemises. And then Guild Mage is a way to maybe manage the Shark to Crab or kind of burn the opponent out with a second ability. Another fight spell. Yeah, not much we can do about it. So yeah, if one of these demises was maybe like a final payment, we would have been able to deal with the uh, Charter Crab nicely. Yep, that's a setback, all right.
Probably just replay the transports. On the bright side, my opponent hasn't played a ton of creatures to benefit from the project so far. The draw from Shark to Crab kind of just replaced itself. Now they're starting to pull ahead with it. And that is a target for Demise, at least, before they adapt. And more Bounce Spells, pretty effective when we're spending 6 mana on it. So if you maybe replace some of these Demises with a 1-drop or a 2-drop at the start of the game, we could have been applying a lot more pressure. Alright, so I think I probably need to just handle this hybrid. So, question here is whether I main phase the Demise or wait for them to adapt, potentially. But the disadvantage of waiting is that potentially my opponent can kind of play around this type of effect. I think I just main phase it now. Because my opponent would also be suspicious if I pass without playing Messenger. So, they would suspect uh, some instant speed interaction. But sometimes it is worth it for the opponent to kind of potentially make a mistake and adapt into our removal spell and uh, kind of waste all their mana for the turn. But given that they have the Guardian project, they don't really have a reason to adapt a uh, two drop there. They're better off just playing more creatures. Well, that's uh, a lot of bounce spells, that's for sure. At least the Panther is pretty cheap to replay. And a Steeple Creeper that can gain flying. Tyside joins the fun. So I think the play is Messenger, Panther keep a black mana to give death touch. And technically I'm not that on board. Probably should have kept up the Ores of Guildgate here instead of uh, Swamp, so I could potentially represent having a 1 mana white comma trick. That's gonna give the Shard to grab flying. And if they also give Creeper flying, we're dead. Good game. The mice could have uh, answered the spy potentially, but yeah, the guardian project there was what uh, kept fueling the opponent. All right, decent hands. This time we've got a bit of a more aggressive start with Panther into double oligarch, and final payment complements the oligarchs nicely as well. And we've got a good start to enable Spectacle on turn 3. No black mana for my opponents. So I feel like I can free roll 1 damage. And hopefully next turn play Blade Juggler. I'll take two. So I might just attack with Oligarch, because if I send a Panther... I mean, I guess I can still play another Oligarch, so it's not too bad. But I don't necessarily want to trade Panther for Officer. So I'll just send Oligarch here. And next turn we can double spell pretty efficiently. There's a black mana. Opponent says go, potentially keeping up some instant speed removal. I think I just keep back the panther, send these two, I'm fine trading them off. And then play a couple more oligarchs. I could respond here with final payment, I don't think I care. Mm, 
yeah, we had a pretty nice curve here. Used every single mana every turn. So far, at least. And a crocodile's a good candidate for this final payment. I could also play Thrall first, and then maybe next turn final payment. But then it means I don't get to attack here, and I would miss out on quite a bit of damage. Um, so it's still a close call. But I think I will use a removal spell. And now I'm okay trading the Panther for the Officer. Since I'm not going to spend my mana elsewhere. And now that my opponent is down to 9 life, we're also getting to the point where we can just keep attacking with Oligarchs, even if they die, just to get the Afterlife token. Keep up the pressure and apply as much damage as possible. Especially with Thrall in hand to get the last points of damage in. Dead Revels get their creatures back, that's fine. Attack with all, play Grasping Thrall. And they should be dead next turn. So this game we just had a pretty strong curve out draw. And our opponent couldn't really keep up. Alright, this time we don't have such a nice start, but it's probably still a keepable hand. I've got a couple draw steps to maybe find a 1 or 2 drop to enable Spectacle. I've got Demise on 3, and even if we have to play this for 5 mana, it's not the end of the world. Opponent does have a good start. Well, let's hope if we can dodge a turn 3 Blade Juggler from our opponent. Demise is a clean answer for the Enforcer at least. It's gonna be a Grudian instead. Alright. So now we've got a decision. I think I'm leaning Oligarch, since I don't mind trading it for the Grudian. And there's a small chance it helps me play Blade Juggler next turn. The downside is that if my opponent has their own demise, I lose my Oligarch and I end up taking more damage. Yeah, straight for the Grudian. Let's get in for one. And I don't have any tap lands left in my deck. So we'll keep up Guildgate. Although I think the only one drop in our deck is Twilight Panther. Alright, another Blade Juggler, that's a nice way to uh, both get a board presence going and draw some more cards. Opponent did nothing with 4 mana, so their hand is all expensive cards, maybe. And given that information, if they spend 1 mana on activating the Panther, then maybe they don't get to play a 5-drop instead. So I'm pretty happy with that exchange. They must have drawn the Oligarch for the turn. And I'm still probably leaning towards uh, playing another Blade Juggler. I suppose I could also play Grasping Thrall, or I can just spend a turn casting Grotesque Demise, but I only get to play one of them, so I'd rather play two of them next turn. The downside of playing Thrall is that my opponent could be holding some removal that they're happy to use on the Thrall, whereas I would rather have them use it on something else like the Blade Juggler first. So it's a close decision. Probably gonna lean for the more mana efficient play here. 
And I think I'm gonna leave back the spirits, or am I? Let's say they kill the Thrall. Because the thing is, I don't necessarily want to trade here and leave them with a spirit token. I would rather demise the Oligarch, especially considering my opponent probably doesn't have too many more cards in hand that die to the Grotesque Demise. So I think I'm okay attacking for one, given that I don't want to trade for Oligarch. Of course, if they attack here, I'm probably okay blocking. They might have a Blade Brand, give this Death Touch. That's one card that makes sense. And then I guess I would rather wait and keep up Demise. Uh, if they use a combo trick, I'm happy. So it's close here. If we want to play around Blade Brand, I could take two. All right, let's take two. Land five and a Syndicate Messenger. Good target for Grotesque Demise as well. So now I have to decide if I want to double Demise or if I want to go for uh, Demise plus maybe Blade Juggler. Another close decision. I think I probably just Demise the Messenger attack and play Blade Juggler, and then I'm okay trading Juggler for maybe the Oligarch. Alright, Knight is gonna be strong next turn, potentially. And if they do still have something like Blade Brand in hand, of course I can attack first with Demise at the ready. Carry an Imp. Makes our future Dead Revels a little bit worse. So now they could potentially double block my Grasping Thrall. And if I Demise, then they could still have Blade Brand, but I guess that's still an okay exchange at the end of the day. So I think I will still probably attack. And see what happens. Opponent does go for a double block. We'll put, I guess, a spirit first and then demise the imp in case they have a pump spell. That way, I at least get to kill the spirit token. But we might see a bleed brand. Aha, final payment. Makes sense. All right. Not the worst trade ever. So we are almost on empty here, but uh, Knight is a pretty good last card to have. Ooh, Anataisa. So we got a Wombo Combo here. Now I just need some more creatures to sacrifice. Do I play Knight first? Do I play Taisa first? Taisa gives us lifelink and vigilance too, so they probably trade off. Um, Knight doesn't really attack into the enforcer, so they would probably keep it back, so they don't trade 4 for 1. It is more mana efficient in case I draw something I can play alongside Taisa. So I'm probably okay just playing this. And then I probably don't attack with a token. Although, hmm. Actually, I think I should attack my opponents. Probably gonna take it and attack me back with the spirit token, and then I get to play Taisa, give this life link, and kind of recoup the life loss. I should have attacked before playing knights. My opponent trades anyway. Didn't necessarily expect him to trade, but I guess it works too. Alright, take one. And a Grudian. Ooh, nice. Well, now we've got a, a ton of options. So now if the knight were to trade, I would get six tokens, which is pretty much game over. I could also wait and like play Ministrant first, sacrifice this to the knight, and make a million tokens as well. But maybe I should just cash in while I can. And my opponent probably just takes four and I get to play Ministrant on defense. All right, never mind. I haven't been able to call my opponent's play so far. Uh, yep, yeah, that happens. All 
And I guess I'll keep land in hand for now. Not sure how they're gonna deal with an army of life-linking spirit tokens here. Our uh, first pick paid off in this game. Not sure what this represents. I guess I could have like Cryo Carnarium and then I don't want to block with Taisa. Uh, even if I lose a Spirit Token, I still have more than lethal. I don't know, I guess I can jump. That way if they do have Cry, they at least lose a Knight as well. <laughs> yeah, Ethereal Absolution would be pretty painful. This seems fine. Just a land. Alright. So all the synergy is coming together in that game. Alright, so we're on the play with a pretty decent hand. Two drop into Blade Juggler, hopefully. And then Taisa with some afterlife cards too. I think I'm leaning Enforcer over Guildmage since that's more likely to set up my Blade Juggler for next turn, even though it potentially deals less damage. Opponent could, for example, play the uh, Trumpeter next turn, which blocks the Guildmage but doesn't block Enforcer. So that's one good reason to play Enforcer first. It's gonna be a Plague White instead. So I'm fine to attack into it, and I'm fine with the trade. And I'll happily trade Juggler for Plague Whites to prevent my opponent from spectacling here. Opponent does nothing. Attack for one and then go to decide between Grudian and Guildmage. Probably Grudian. I might be able to play Guildmage and a Spectacled Dead Revels in the same turn. Ooh, alright. Firewheeler's a good way to catch back up. Because what's likely to happen is that my opponent doesn't attack into Enforcer. So playing Taisa doesn't really add anything, whereas now I can maybe attack with the Messenger. That's fine. Alright, now I can potentially play Grasping Thrill. I could also attack Spectacle Dead Revels and play Blade Juggler. That's also pretty appealing. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, what just happened? Oh no. I clicked the wrong half. That's a bummer. I guess I'm used to the adventures now from Eldraine. So I'm clicking on the left side first. Oh, well, that's an oops. I think we want to get an extra Death Touch creature in play to prevent uh, Recluse from getting out of hand. So the Messenger can still attack, I can Spectacle Blade Juggler, make sure to Spectacle it this time and play Grudian. And then I'll have two Death Touch creatures on defense to block the Recluse potentially.
On the board, we're doing okay. And we've got some good leftovers in hand. But my opponent also still has four cards, so who knows. I think I'm blocking like this. Keep my Grudian. Suppose I could wait and just trade Grudian for Recluse, so I can keep maybe the Afterlife for uh, Taisa. So yeah, this seems okay. Ooh, Hellkites. Yeah. Well, that's a bomb. If we don't draw a removal for it, we're uh, pretty much dead. Well, we do have a lot of powerful synergies of our own, but Hellkites with potentially double activation next turn is just going to end the game. Maybe the Grudian should attack. Because I'm probably not going to block the Wrecker next turn anyway. So yeah, land 8 would be pretty bad because then they can double activate Hellkites. If they don't have land 8, I could technically trade off for Hellkites, so it probably stays back. But then I still need to top deck my final payment or consign to the pits. That can prevent one of my flyers from blocking. So this makes sense if they use Hellkite on my messenger. That's fine. Take eight. And if they deal two to me, I would be at two. But is there anything I can draw? So yeah, maybe I do need to trump the Hellkites to give myself an extra turn. We'll try this. There's also the Guild Mage that could come into play. Carnage to make me discard two. Draw Blade Juggler. So I have nine damage here. A redraw with Blade Juggler. Now I could also keep back my two flyers to try and double block Hellkites. Hope they don't draw land number eight. And that's another option. Or I can use Guild Mage to tap down the Hellkites. So I think that means I send these two for five. Then I get to play Blade Juggler and tap down Hellkite, and I can double block the Wrecker. And just pass here, I think. And then if they do draw land A, they can only deal four damage to my face. And hopefully we have lethal on the way back. Well, it's not often that you get the chance to potentially beat Skargon Hellkite. Even made us discard some pretty good cards with the uh, Carnival Carnage. Dagger caster. Plague whites. So attack with Thrall and this burns them out. Alright, that was a close game. Even made a misclick and still got there.
on the play with a good hand if we can find land 3. Don't love having my 7 and 6 drops in my opening hand. But um, hopefully the Blade Juggler with the third land can draw me more lands and then we get to eventually find enough mana to cast them. Double Oligarch into Blade Juggler is just such a good start that I can overlook having these two in hand. Alright, land 3 is good. Up against Azorius. And I'm just gonna jam. So we've got our dream start here. How about another Blade Juggler? Now this one might get countered, so I could bait out a counterspell with Oligarch. And I guess I'll still play around Quench, in case they drew that for the turn. And there's a Thought Collapse, so happy we waited on the Blade Juggler. And we did draw the lands in the meantime, which is good. Deploy, sure. I can just cast this for 5 mana, so I don't need the Spectacle. But let's make sure to tap our mana in such a way that we can... Uh... So here, if I draw my Guild Gate, I can play it, so I don't want to play land first. But if I draw any 2-drop, I can cast it, so this seems fine. I guess we milled over the gates with the uh, counterspell, so I guess we don't need to worry about that. But still, good to keep in mind. Alright, so opponent setting back once again. Just gonna attack and see what happens. Sure. Opponent still potentially with counterspell mana. But I don't mind if they counter my transport here, and if it resolves, even better. Sure. So the board right now would trade. Opponent does keep a card on top. And the mice, alright. So now I think I want to just double spell. I'll demise the flyer. I guess I can play Grudian first. See if there's any response. On the flip side, if they have a quench, they can quench this, whereas now if I did it in the other order, I could have paid for it, but... Alright, they had another Thought Collapse anyway. I'm fine with the trade. So we know our opponent kept this card on top, so it's gonna be a good one. But we still have some good leftovers, a Death Toucher, which should trade for most uh, cards from my opponent. And they're at 6. So don't hate my position. How many cards do I have left? They did cast a lot of Thought Collapses, 16 remaining. So not too close to getting milled out. Sure. So let's resolve the Knight here, hopefully. Could have played Thrall to play around Quench. Uh oh. Mass manipulation stealing my knight. That's unfortunate. Alright. Um, so I don't necessarily want to give my opponent the spirit tokens from Afterlife. So I think I should just play Thrall and pass and then hope to kill them with Thrall before they make any spirit tokens. So 
so they can sacrifice hero to make some flyers. But that's okay. And does the oligarch attack? I mean, they're probably gonna just take three, jump oligarch with hero, and then sack it to the knight to make a 1 1. But might as well force the issue, I guess. And I don't mind getting a 1 1 myself. And then we get to play Griffin. Still don't want to attack with Grudin, I don't think. So let's do that. And if they do block Oligarch with a Knight, I get a 1-1 Flyer, which helps. They might decide to sack the hero first, jumping the Thrall if they want to play around another Thrall, burning them out. And that's what they'll do. But now they are facing a lethal Air Force. So let's see how this plays out. Their own Griffin. So that can trade for one of my three part creatures, but they're still dead. Those Grudian attack, if they have like a fairy duelist, they could potentially survive. So then do I want to make this trade basically? Probably at this point. Alright. So we got there. So four and one, let's keep it up. And a decent opening hands. No blade jugglers or oligarchs this time around. But uh, Summary Judgment and Panther should be good against Gruul. And no early plays. That one I'm happy to demise. So we pretty much know our opponent doesn't have any 2 or 3 drops in hand, and they seem to be stuck on 3 lands as well. A good target for this final payments. Could also wait for the summary judgment, but then if they have any way of pumping up the shaman that's bad and then i would have to cast this on my following turn so i could like play taisa here i suppose i could keep up death touch from panther and then next turn final payments so i guess it still works but yeah if they have like some fight spell killing the shaman now circumvents that from happening although i don't know if we can keep them off having a creature to fight with for the rest of the game so it's a close decision here. I think I'm leaning towards just final payments. There's also the argument for just attacking with the messenger, keep the panther back, and then I'm fine trading panther for the shaman, and if they do have a fight spell I can respond with final payments, which is also reasonable. But there's also ways that can go wrong. So just hit with Messenger, hang back with Panther, and in this case, probably just play Taisa. And they might have a fight spell to kill Taisa, but that's okay. Or I can play Oligarch. Could also attack with the Panther, because then if they attack with the Renthorn, that opens up Judgment to kill it. But I don't really want to trade one for five, so let's do this. Make sure to keep up black mana. A 
and they're somewhat likely to have a fight spell given the lack of early plays on their parts. But it's not like Taisa is doing much at the moment. That's fine. That's an excellent draw. Sadly, I don't have enough black mana to also play Oligarch here. And I do want to keep up Death Touch on Panther. Alternatively, I could play Oligarch and then double block Recluse. There are ways that can go wrong. Then again, they could also kill my Panther. And then I don't have a great block on Recluse, whereas I can always chum block with Oligarch if I want to. Maybe it is fine to just play Oligarch here. In which case, I probably should have considered attacking with Panther just to get in one extra point of damage. Let's play Oligarch. We would be getting two tokens from Oligarch thanks to Taisa. Alright. There's a Savage Smash on Taisa before attacking. I think the plan is still the same. Don't really want to take a million damage. Could decide to trade for Renthorn, I suppose, prevent one more damage, and then I'm probably going to Judgment to Recluse anyway, so might as well save myself one point. Collision Colossus would be bad, and that's also a card I could easily still have in hands. Stony Strength instead. Alright, so they get to keep their Renthorn. But I can Judgment to Recluse, and this can trade for Renthorn still. So it's not a complete disaster. Block, and then give Death Touch. So as the dust settles, we're still doing okay. Uh, do I want to attack with both my flyers? Probably. They can pump this once. Uh, even if they play land, they still can only pump it once. So I'm only like scheduled to take two damage. And if they kill the knight without exiling it, I would have a lethal air force, and then maybe I can kill them over two turns with my flyers. Ooh, hasty beastmaster could be scary. They're gonna go with a plus one plus one counter. Pass a turn. Now I can also sacrifice my messenger to get an extra blocker. So the question here is whether I send a one one token or just a messenger. I feel like just sending Messenger is probably safest. And then I can sack the Messenger to basically have four blockers back. If my opponent's at two, I should be able to kill them next turn. And do I play my lands? I don't foresee needing all the mana next turn. And maybe that makes him play around something. Who knows? Right, let's pass. All right, that's a hasty Arrings, potentially. That also tramples. So that's maybe getting blocked by knights. Let's go full control real quick. So before blockers, sacrifice messenger, make a couple more blockers. And then this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. I would be taking four damage down to three, so I could be that to a Skewer the Critics. This makes three tokens when it dies, so it feels safe to just do this. 
and then I would get three spirit tokens. I'm only taking two trample damage. And even if they have one removal spell for my spirit token, I still have two spirit tokens for lethal. So, yeah, let's do this. And a transport for good measure. Alright, sweet. That was a close game. So we're 5 and 1. Alright, we've got our first hand with uh, dysfunctional mana, sadly. Yeah, on the play, I don't think I can keep this. This is better. And a tough decision. Do I bottom a land or a spell? If I bottom a land, of course, casting transport is going to be tricky. So if I bottom the transport, I can use Griffin to find more action. If I bottom a land and I draw a fourth land, I can use Griffin to maybe find additional lands to cast a transport. So very close call here. I don't have that many expensive cards in my deck, so keeping four lands and drawing one or two could be bad. I think I'm just bottoming the transport here and not be greedy, but a close decision. All right. So hopefully we don't draw any more lands for the rest of the game. Scorchmark, pretty good answer for Oligarch, as we don't get the token. And yeah, drawing two lands was kind of the worst case after bottoming the transport. So it's not looking good. Although Blade Juggler is a good draw. And Ministerin seems fine. Not the best blocker in the face of Plague White necessarily, but... Still better than another land, I guess. So do I trade here? Don't think so, because I would like to spectacle Blade Juggler. And keeping my 3-2 flyer seems uh, worth it. But of course my opponent also can have their own Blade Jugglers. Wow, secure the critics, so very mana efficient turn here with two spectacle cards. So I can go for the 5 mana Blade Juggler or for Ministrant. Uh, Ministrant, I'm happy to trade for their Blade Juggler, of course. Or we could just trade Blade Jugglers and take 2. Which is also fine. I'm probably not going to be enabling Spectacle anytime soon. So yeah, we're definitely behind on resources here. We were on the play. And we had to mulligan, so we're down two cards. Could have also been fine to trade for Plague White instead of uh, Blade Juggler, because the Ministrant can trade for Juggler, whereas it doesn't trade for Plague White. Now I'm probably forced to chum block the Recluse. Guildmage could tap down Recluse next turn if we want to take 6. Or I could trade for Plague White. I think I'm just gonna do this, take 2, and then hope to use Guildmage for Recluse in the future, or draw one of our Death Touch creatures. Or removal spells, got a few of those. Uh, drawing Taisa here could help giving our tokens lifelink. Oof, second recluse. Well, final payment's an answer for one of them. So I guess we can kill one and then tap down the other one. And since I'm not blocking Plague White, I might as well attack with these. And then pay five. Or I could sack a spirit token. Probably still paying five.
Ooh, Dead Revels, excellent draw. So now... I can get back Blade Juggler plus Ministrant, I think. Could also go for Griffin. Either way, I can uh, get back those two and then play... Probably... Hmm. If I play Blade Juggler, I still have the two mana for Guild Mage, which is important. So I think we'll start there. Question is, do I send both Spirit Tokens or one? I think I send both. Make sure to Spectacle. And get back Juggler. Ministrant lines up better against the Brutes if they can deal with my Guild Mage somehow. I think I like it over Griffin here, but it's close. And I just need white mana for the guild mage. Alright, how about I just kill it now? Well, that was a good turn. That revels one of our better draws. And now the board is kind of stable. Trade here, take one. And preserve the guild mage. Now, of course, at four life, could get burnt out pretty easily. Opponent keeping three cards in hand is kind of suspicious. Yeah, let's attack. Could maybe see a dagger caster, clean up all my one toughness stuff. Trumpeter, sure. No attacks, and another Blade Juggler. Now going to 3 means I'm dead to another Skewer the Critics here. So we have to keep that in mind. So let's just send the two Spirits, keep back as many blockers as uh, possible still. And then I can Spectacle this for 3. If I draw land I can still use Guild Mage. Alright, Grudian, so we'll just play this. Yeah, this doesn't gain life, it only makes the opponent lose life. Alright, hopefully no burn spells. So they can pump this twice. Definitely don't mind trading for Ministrants. And then, what's the second victim? I guess Twilight Panther. I'm not forcing them to pump the Trumpeter twice here, they can just activate it once. So I could have potentially blocked in such a way to force them to activate it twice. Grotas Demise, great for dealing with Enforcers, so do we have lethal? 5, 6, 7. Yeah, we have lethal if they don't have anything. So let's go for it. And that does it, sweet. Alright, well, didn't think we were winning this game after mulliganing and kind of drawing a couple lands, but uh, yeah, we drew well. The Dead Revels turn was definitely the turning point in this game. So 6 and 1. Time for the final boss, and we get a uh, couple attempts. Let's go. We're on the draw with a pretty good opening hand here. Turn to Enforcer, two good removal spells, Thrill as a nice curve stopper. And if we draw any more two drops or Blade Jugglers, those are all good draws. And another Orzov Mirror, presumably. Ministrant, a nice follow-up to our Enforcer. Plague Whites. 
It does get to attack past my Enforcer and Ministrant, so it's actually kind of a problem that I'll maybe have to kill. So no way of preventing Blade Juggler this turn, other than, I guess, blocking here. Forcing my opponent to use Death Touch, and then they don't have the mana to Blade Juggler. So if they had Blade Juggler, they probably would not have attacked with a Twilight Panther. All right, they have another Panther, makes sense. And yeah, given this hand, it could be reasonable to just demise the Plague Whites. Given that I have final payment as well, if I play Ministrant, I'm basically scheduled to take two from Plague White. Of course, I would be happy to trade Ministrant for Panther, and I could hit for one. Or I can demise the Plague Whites and just uh, trade one for one. So it's a close decision. Of course, Demise is pretty good against Orzhov, being able to deal with afterlife creatures. So maybe I should wait until I find another answer for Plague Whites and just uh, play Ministrant for now. We're not forcing them to use Death Touch here, but I'm fine with the trade. Sentinel's Mark, sure. So now I could decide to Grotesdemize the Panther. Oligarch still doesn't trade for Plague White, sadly. So we're basically in a racing situation here, trading 3 for 2, but we've got some good follow-up plays here with the Grasping Thrall. And I think I main phase the Demise. I guess my opponent could have their own final payments to sacrifice a Panther and get a bit of value, but it's not the end of the world, so losing a Spirit Token. If I let them untap and they have another pump spell, I could get punished for waiting. So I think I do it now. Blade Juggler, alright. Another Demise. So, I think I want to wait on Thrill. And instead, this turn I can go Oligarch plus Demise. Oligarch trades for Juggler, Demise could deal with the Plague White or I could take two. And see if my opponent maybe has their own Thrill I can exile instead. Because if I play Thrill, then I don't want to take three from Juggler. And I also don't necessarily want to trade for two of my Spirit Tokens. So... Let's try this. And now I feel like I want to wait on using the Demise to see what's up. So reason to fire off Demise before damage. Of course we prevent two damage. And we prevent a Spectacle, which could also be relevant. Reason to wait, maybe my opponent plays a Grasping Thrall and I would rather exile that or any other number of uh, afterlife creatures. And a Plague White is not such a huge threat that needs to be dealt with. So I think I'll wait. And of course if they do have another combat trick I can potentially punish them with Demise. Viscopa Vampire... I guess is a fine target for Demise. Sure. It does just trade for one of my Spirit Tokens, but I don't think I want to let my opponent gain three when this is a three turn clock, potentially. And the Thrall also speeds it up a little bit. Alright, so pedal to the metal. Opponent is facing lethal if they can't interact. But uh, probably... Two turns is more likely, so I don't want to block. Yeah, Kaya's Wrath could be a thing. They need double black for that. 
not a blade juggler. But I don't see them uh, surviving now. Although, I guess they could still have something. Like uh, their own final payments, sacrificing a creature. Let's attack. I guess I probably should have played Oligarch before attacking, in case I need to final payment sacking Oligarch. Alright, GG's. Alright, so got a clean sweep after losing the first game. Made the one misclick along the way. Luckily didn't end up costing. Pretty happy with how we played most of the other games. So yeah, Orzov, it's a pretty reliable strategy in Ravnica Allegiance drafts and uh, usually doesn't disappoint. Let's crack some packs. And let's do some uh, Eldraine packs for good measure. Alright, not the most interesting packs given that we unlocked the entire sets already and we just get a bunch of gems, but either way, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.